we are given f of x and g of x and asked to perform function arithmetic. We're asked to determine f plus g of x, f minus g of x, f times g of x, and f divided by g of x. For the first step, notice how f of x is given in factored form. We will need to expand this. To expand this, we have two factors of x plus two, and then we multiply, which gives us four products, x times x plus x times two, plus two times x plus two times two, which after simplifying gives us x squared plus four x plus four. When performing the function arithmetic, we will use the expanded form of f of x. To begin, f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x, where f of x is equal to the quantity x squared plus four x plus four, and then we have plus g of x, which is equal to the quantity two minus three x. Now because we have addition, we simply combine like terms, or if it's helpful, we can think of distributing a positive one here and a positive one here to clear the parentheses. We know multiplying by positive one doesn't change anything, and therefore this gives us x squared plus four x plus four, and then plus two minus three x. And now we combine like terms, we have two x terms, and we have two constants. Simplifying, we have x squared, and then four x minus three x is one x, or just x giving us plus x, and four plus two is six giving us plus six. F plus g of x equals x squared plus x plus six. Sometimes we are asked to get the domain after performing function arithmetic. In this case, because we have a quadratic function, the domain would be all reals. Next we have f minus g of x, which is equal to f of x minus g of x, which gives us the quantity x squared plus four x plus four, minus the quantity two minus three x. Because we are subtracting g of x here, we do have to have g of x in parentheses, so that we subtract the entire function. And again here, because of the subtraction, we have to be more careful. We can think of distributing a positive one here, but because of the subtraction, we would think of distributing a negative one here. So distributing a positive one here doesn't change anything. We have x squared plus four x plus four. And then distributing a negative one, we have negative one times two, which is negative two, giving us minus two. And then negative one times a negative three x is positive three x, giving us plus three x. If we don't want to think of distributing, we just have to be careful and subtract each term. We have minus positive two, and then minus negative three x, which gives us plus three x. And now we combine like terms. We have two x terms, and we have two constants. So we have x squared, and then four x plus three x is seven x, giving us plus seven x. And then four minus two is two, giving us plus two. So again, f minus g of x is a quadratic function, and therefore the domain, again, is all reals. f minus g of x is equal to x squared plus seven x plus two. And now let's determine f times g of x. f times g of x is equal to f of x times g of x, which is equal to the quantity x squared plus four x plus four, times the quantity two minus three x. Here, because we have a trinomial times a binomial, we will have six products. We distribute the x squared first, which gives us two products, and then we distribute four x, which gives us two more products, and then finally we distribute the four, giving us the last two products. So multiplying, we have x squared times two, which is two x squared, and then we have x squared times a negative three x, which is equal to negative three x cubed, giving us minus three x cubed. And now we distribute four x. Four x times two is eight x, giving us plus eight x. And then we have four x times negative three x, which is negative twelve x squared, giving us minus twelve x squared. And now we distribute four. Four times two is eight, giving us plus eight. And then four times negative three x is negative twelve x, giving us minus twelve x. Notice how we have two x squared terms. 
and we have two x terms. Simplifying, starting with the highest degree term, we have negative three x cubed, and then two x squared minus 12 x squared is negative 10 x squared, giving us minus 10 x squared, and then eight x minus 12 x is negative four x, giving us minus four x, and then finally we have plus eight. F times g of x is equal to negative three x cubed minus 10 x squared minus four x plus eight, and because we have a polynomial, the domain of f times g of x, again, is all real numbers. And then for part d, we have f divided by g of x, which is equal to f of x divided by g of x, where we know f of x is equal to the quantity x squared plus four x plus four, and g of x is equal to the quantity two minus three x. At this point, we would normally try to factor the numerator and then simplify, but we know the factored form of x squared plus four x plus four is the quantity x plus two squared. So we can also give this quotient as the quantity x plus two squared divided by the quantity two minus three x. But again, it doesn't simplify, and therefore either form is acceptable for f minus g of x. But because we have a quotient, the domain is not going to be all reals because division by zero is undefined. To determine which value to exclude from the domain, we have to determine which value of x makes the denominator equal to zero. To do this, let's set two minus three x equal to zero and solve for x. To solve for x, we subtract two on both sides, giving us negative three x equals negative two, and then dividing both sides by negative three, and simplifying, we have x equals positive two thirds. So when x equals positive two thirds, we have division by zero, which is undefined, and therefore the domain is all reals except x equals two thirds. So we'll say the domain is all reals except x equals two thirds, or sometimes we just say x can't equal two thirds. I hope you found this helpful.